クズだはっ<笑>ェノサイン勝った Hello everyone, what's happening? This is Forgo, and today I want to talk about the Seven Knights Imprint Stones and answer the question as to whether or not you should get them and which ones should you get for whatever character. Now, we'll be able to get these Imprint Stones in the exchange shop from the Rush event. Every day you'll be able to farm this, which you should be doing. So that way you can get these tokens and hopefully get some of these Imprint Stones. And this is really what I'm going to focus on. Now, these Seven Knights Hammers, these things really uh, give you uh, increased. Rate for you to level up your imprint stones, but let's take a look at these things now. I've already purchased one, I'm gonna show you guys something really interesting in a second. But so you look at the first one here this is increased attack by three percent, decreased enemies' defenses for eight percent, and increased seven knights fighters by ten percent. Well, here's the thing I've already leveled up one of these stones to level 10, this goes up to 10%. This goes up to 20%, and this stays at 10%. That is 20% extra attack for this character. That is more attack than any of them gold imprint stones that we get. And I'll do a little comparison here in a little bit. The diamond stone gives you increased attack, 10% chance to gain super armor, 4.6 seconds when seven nice fighters attack, and this will go up. I believe it goes up to one second, maybe it goes up a little bit more. But where can this be useful? Well, in PvP. Now, when it comes to Imprint Stones, really PvE should be your focus. Or like League Match, Infinite Battle, those things where the Imprint Stones are applicable. In Championship, they're only applicable about every 13 weeks. So it's not really, to me, viable to put a lot of resources in Imprint Stones. Unless you just want to level up a bunch of Imprint Stones for certain characters that you're going to play. In those specific weeks, that Imprint Stones are allowed. Now, there is another imprint stone that you can gain super armor from. There is another imprint stone that you can gain enemy de de decreased enemy defenses from. But you don't get these extra attack stats, and that's the thing. You don't get these things. And these stones are freaking OP because of this stuff. And then the hexagon stone here, increased attack by 3%. This goes up to 10%. Gains power for every 1 second for 10 seconds when a 7 eye fire uses awakened skills. And then, of course, you get the 10%. Now, this 10% is going to stay. That's going to go up to 10%. You can actually add, if you have three of these stones on one of these seven nice characters, you're going to add 60% attack. 60%. And you can get power gain from this one, and you'll be able to get the super armor from this one. Now, why is the super armor important? Well, there's one immortal dungeon, which is the immortal rock dungeon, that... Uh, has weakness to characters that have super armor. So if you're using any character but a yellow character because yellow has a disadvantage against that specific boss, the super armor stone here can actually help. You'll actually be able to do uh, more damage, or I think it decreases the burn damage, but it really helps. Then you have these stones here, which increase defenses, all the same other stats. You know, this is just defense, defense, and then it's a little mixed blend of HP. Now, your defensive stone, you definitely want to put on defensive character. The only defensive seven nice character that we have is Rudy. Uh, all the rest of them are attack or balance. So Rudy is really the only one you'd want to put these specific stones on. This one, maybe this one here, and maybe this one here. Or no, not this one, but uh, this one. No? Let me see. That's HP. HP, you'd want to put on your balanced character or your defensive character, but I really think these defensive ones you want to put on your, on Rudy. I keep, uh, let's go down a little bit more. There we go. And then you have the eight attack and HP. These are going to be really good for balanced type fighters like Rachel, who's the only balanced uh, seven night fighter, but I opted to go for just solid attack. So the defensive ones you're going to put on, or the HP, I would probably skip the HP unless you want to have extra HP. Uh, maybe if you're thinking a character's going to have trouble surviving, but I would really go with either these attack ones here for all the attack type fighters, which is Shane, Eileen, and Delon. Or I would go for the, well, let's see if I can find one here. I'd go for, no. I'd go for these defensive ones for Rudy. And then for 
And I would actually go for attack for Rachel as well, but if you want a nice little mix blend, you could go for defense and HP. Uh, would actually be really good for her as well. Now, the thing about this is, let's get out of here and let's look at the other imprint stones that you can use also. So if you look at these other imprint stones, we'll scroll down here. Now, I've already made a video about these imprint stones. Uh, the thing is, these stones here, actually, because of the recovery, actually really help you against the Immortal Vulcan, which uh, Blue has an advantage against. And the only Blue that we have from the Seven Knights is Delon. They all have a 3PG card. So you might, instead of having one of those other imprint stones, you might want to have this recovery stone on him that's going to increase his attack and give you recovery as well because that's going to help you do a lot more damage to the boss. And that's something to think about and that's the decision you're going to have to make. Those things really help against the Immortal Vulcan. Uh, and by the way, all the seven nice characters are useful in RHD, but you don't need imprint stones for RHD. All that matters in there is the level of your character. But in other game modes like Guild Raid, the Immortal Dungeons, the Spider Robot, uh, League Match, Infinite Battle, then Imprint Stones are applicable. The other stone, see here's another one. This is another recovery stone. However, I would not go for that stone at all. I've already talked about that. I would go for this one. Now this is pretty insane because you can have, a, this goes up to 8%. You can have a solid 8% power charge rate with this gain power for 1% every one second, for 10 seconds upon using an awakened skill with one of them, the, the hexagon seven nights, uh, stone that offers gain power. So you can gain a crap ton of power with characters that have three PG cards. As long as you're using this stone and then that other seven nights hexagon stone for them. And you know, in Dellen's case, because he's a blue, because he'll be really useful against the immortal Vulcan. Uh, maybe these healing stones would be better instead of seven nice stones. However, them stones are only going to be here for the duration of this collaboration. So it might be the time to go ahead and pick up those stones. You know, personally, I'm going to pick up three attack stones. Uh, I'm going to pick up uh, the circle, the diamond, and the hexagon. And I'm also going to do the same thing for defense. Because for Rachel being a balance, I'm just going to use the attack ones. Six stones in total. There's one stone that gives you that super armor, right? Well, you can have those other stones that give you the super armor. It's the same effect that gives you the super armor and the extra attack and the extra attack. So it's just way better to go with those stones. The same with that super armor stone that I showed you earlier. And the thing is, you know, when it comes to uh, Rachel, and this is really a kind of a hard thing to figure out. See, for... Shane, the bad thing about Shane as far as imprint stones is she's a green attack. And so she's not going to be relevant for HD, but it really doesn't matter because you imprint stones, I mean, they make a difference, but the level of your character is really what makes a difference in RHD, which is Reviving Hell's Dungeon. But against the Immortal Victor, which she can definitely be used, she's going to have the type advantage, she's going to have that nice 3 PG, but and she has... 30% PG gain in her core effect. So this is a character that I would actually put three of those imprint stones from the seven knights on. I just put three of them on those attack ones on her. If that's what you want to use her for. Now the, you're going to, you might run into a situation where you might already have characters where you're already doing immortal victor because against immortal victor, all you need is a couple sets of those real cards and you're good to go. I mean, once you have, Go to my presets here. Once you have a couple of these sets right here for Immortal Victor, you can pretty well build up enough PG to get it done. You just have one set on each team, on one character from each team, and you can pretty much get it done as long as your characters are strong enough. So whether as to whether or not you should put imprint stones on Shane is really completely up to you. But you know, you can use her against a spider robot. Uh, she, the, the spider robot has no color advantage or disadvantage, so it doesn't matter what color you bring in against it. The thing about her, though, is she doesn't have shock, she doesn't have chill, but you can put a Zhang Fei card on her, and you can put a Shermie card on her, and then just put those imprint stones on her to really jack her up. So she still could be 
useful for that. And like I said, 60% extra attack is freaking insane. Plus, you'll have that stone that decreases uh, the defenses by 20%. And then when you take a look at Rachel, let me see if I can find her real quick. Rachel is actually insane for those imprint stones. And this is freaking fantastic because she is a free-to-play character that all of us got. Check this out. Against the Immortal Rock, the red characters have an advantage. Well, you need PG Ray, right? Well, you can put K Dash in the leadership. You also need Burn. Guess what? She's a red and she has Burn. And she'll benefit from K's leadership that will give her that PG rate on top of her getting this PG rate from her third skill, which is freaking nuts. Increased power charge rate by 10% for seven seconds. So she could have that, get the PG rate from. K, that's 30% PG rate. So you could actually slap on three of those imprint stones on her. And I'll show you right now. If you take a look at this imprint stone, you can look at the stats. Increase attack by 10%. Decrease enemies' defenses by 20% for four seconds upon landing seven nice fighters' active skill on a 10 second cooldown. That is very powerful. I used this uh, a stone similar to this on my pretty zero, and it's absolutely insane for the damage that you're going to do to the other characters. And you get the increased 7 night fires by 10%. This doesn't go up when you level up the imprint stone, but the first stat and the second stat do, at least for this specific imprint stone. This is bonkers. And Rachel, I'm telling you, Rachel is a prime candidate for those damn imprint stones because, one, you can use her in the guild raid. You can use her in guild raid because, guess what? The guild raid is weak to burn on easy and on hard. They're weak to burn, which is freaking awesome. So you can actually use K-Dash, you can use her, and you can use Nest Keel. All burn characters, all are going to benefit from K's leadership. That's nuts. But actually in Guild Raid, you'd want to use her leadership because she actually has a better le leadership. You don't need PG game for Guild Raid. So you could put her in the leadership and then have K and Nest Keel on there. And then you just got characters doing solid burn, giving them some burn damage strikers. And Jesus, I mean, once they're leveled up, you're going to destroy this. Now, it's not going to be very good for Expert, but still. But even on Expert, if you got a striker like Lady Geese or Halloween Chris, you can still use her and get that 60% extra attack from those imprint stones. I really think Rachel would be absolutely insane. Uh, let's go into the Codex and we'll take a look at Rudy here. So Rudy, who I haven't gotten yet, but I will get this guy. So Rudy is a yellow element, right? And he's going to have an advantage against Immortal Most. And for Immortal Most on the first team, you need Shock and Explosion. But you can put this guy on the second team. You'll have that 3 PG card, nice long animation. You really want a PG rate leadership, but I guess maybe if you can do enough damage, maybe this leadership would be fine. But Rudy actually does have 15% power charge rate. Now for Rudy, it, you can make a very good argument as to what imprint stone to put on him. You could put the PG rate stone in the middle for him, the diamond stone, get that 8% PG rate, and then get the extra PG rate uh, from it as well after using the awakened skill. Or you could just give this guy three imprint stones from the seven knights, You'll have that last stone that actually gives you PG rate. He's already got 15% PG rate in his core, and that might be good enough. Although, I think more than likely, you'll probably rather have a PG rate stone in the middle. Now, I don't know about Dellen and Eileen because we just don't have them in the game. But I can tell you that Eileen has shock damage, and she's a purple fighter. So she'll actually be good against the Immortal Typhoon. You do need a purple attack team for RHD, which again, you don't need imprint stones for, but I'm just throwing it out there. And she'll be used for the Spider Robot because it is weak to shock damage. You just put a Zhang Fei card on her and you'll be good to go. So she's someone else to also think about. You know, she's an attack type fighter. So you get three of those attack stones from for the Seven Knights. And Delon is also an attack type. So you could do the same thing. I just don't know what their PG rate is for those two characters. So I don't know if you would be better off to get two of the PG rate stones 
I know I'm kind of jumping around a lot, but I think it's better to show it. So I don't know if you're better off just to get... Let's see, I think I passed it up. So I don't know if you're better off just to get two of these stones, like one for... Uh, maybe you might need one for Rudy if you're going to use them in Immortal Most, or and you might need one for Eileen, Dellen. I just don't know because they're not in the game. I don't know what kind of core effects they got. I don't know what kind of PG gain they got. But Rachel, more than likely, you won't need it because you'll have a 20% PG rate leadership from K. You'll get the 10% PG from her third skill, and you'll have the PG rate from one of the seven nice stones so you probably won't need this at all for her you would probably be better off just to have three attack stones and for Dellen, you might need this because he has 15 percent pg rate in his core but with a 20 percent pg rate leadership if you have it which currently right now is shion um the john cena back in the day he would work as well no he wouldn't because rudy is a defensive fighter i think he only works for attack fighters but you'll probably end up needing a PG stone for him. So my conclusion is for Shane, you know, if you're going to use her in Immortal Victor, if you plan to use her against a spider robot, then you might want to go ahead and pick up three of those stones. Three attack stones, uh, the one that I just showed you guys. Uh, this one here, you want to get three of these babies. For her, she's an attack type fighter. She's going to benefit. For Rachel, I would say probably the same thing. Unless you want the ones with the HP or the ones with the HP and the defense. Or maybe the ones with the defense. She's a balanced type fighter, so she'll benefit from it. But really, I would just go for attack in my humble opinion. And then for Rudy, I would go for the defensive stones. I like this. It's going to have the defensive stat here. I would go for two of them. One in this slot, one in this slot. And then the middle one, I probably would go with the PG Ray leadership if you plan on using him for Immortal Most. And again, I just don't know about Eileen and Dellen because they're not in the game. I don't know what kind of core effects they got. And I don't know what kind of PG gain they have. So I can't tell you whether or not you should go for all three stones for them or not. But again, Shane, all three stones. She already has 30% uh, PG gain in her core effect. For Rachel, I think to go with all three stones would be awesome for her as well. Really, in my opinion, I think Rachel would be the best character out of the three that we have so far for them because it, she's just so useful. You know, you're going to use her in RHD. You can't because she is a red balance fighter. You will use her past tier 40. You can use her in Guild Raid. You can use her against the Immortal Rock. She's just super useful. And you can use her against the Spider Robot. She's a very, very versatile character in the game because she has burn and because she's a red fighter. She just has a lot of versatility. So I would at least try to get three of those stones from there. But if you can get six, get three with the attack stat, three with the defensive stat, I think that would be the best way to go. So hopefully this will help some of you out out there. And let me know what characters you've gotten, what cards you've gotten. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care and have a good one.